This is your Minecraft base. This is 50 creepers. And this is what happens if you don't watch the video. Today, we're testing the craziest Minecraft base defense hacks. We hit this button right here. <laughs> wow. So that's the creeper bomb. So first off, how are you going to collect a billion creepers unless you're playing on my server? I don't know. Even on my server, I don't think creepers explode if you get them from a spawner. So, but I do like the idea behind it. And I think we can try to create something similar. So creeper bomb, it's going to launch creepers. We obviously need slime with it. That needs to bounce you like when another one like bounces you forward. And like, I just have never built one of these in my life and have no idea how this is supposed to work. We out here working through the night trying to pull this one off. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's just see what uh, what this does. Well, that obviously was not it. Maybe now no delay. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, that was definitely not the prettiest looking bump I've ever seen. So three ticks is the move. Give her a shot here. Okay, well that did absolutely not work how I intended. Oh, that's what the issue is. So the issue was there was just no easy way for them to travel. The, the stuff stopped them from moving. And then what you're gonna wanna do is get a dispenser in on this bad boy. This should be the answer we've been waiting for, my friends. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. I did it. I made the creeper launching defense. I think this actually came out really cool. I am actually so proud that I made this one. Now the question is, does it work with TNT? Let's find out. Oh! I made it launch TNT and it works perfectly and creepers? Are you kidding me? I am so proud of myself. I just, I can't stop looking at it. Wow. And there it goes. All my hard work down the drain. Actually do a ton of damage. Fireworks do a ton of damage. Wow, a firework trap? I've actually never seen anything like that before. Huh. Oh, that's actually really smart. People are going to be questioning my sanity when they're like, yo, this dude out here just blowing himself up. It's okay. It's for science. So let's try this. Wow. Orange to green. Very pretty. Okay, let's try this now. There we go. You just have to make it the right type of firework. Okay, let's give it a shot. Oh, that does do a lot of damage. How far away does it hurt you? Dang! These are actually legit. What the heck? Whoa, we might have the best new base defense ever. All right, let's try to improve this. Like, is there a version that Zachlis can use? Like, if you watch me, you're like, yo. I saw Zach's video. I know what it's about. I, I have no idea. So this seems like the range is about three blocks. So that would be a pretty safe bet that that would work. <laughs> Hello there, little guy. Hey. Okay. Goodbye. I'm going to have to do some experiments here to see. That is definitely not it. Like, would that hurt you? Ah, uh, does it? <laughs> okay. Hey, that could be it. What if sea pickles are the answer? Let's try it. Come on! Walk with me on this journey as we evolve the design. This is definitely not gonna work. Oh man, which one are you more suspicious about? I mean, yes, this one's a little bit higher, but I mean, the fact there's a freaking dispenser there, just, I'm sus about that. Oh, guys, firework through web makes it go slower. Look, it delays it. Whoa! Let's use that in our design. Now, what if this is gone? Oh, guys, guys, I think I did it. I think I just created something new. I think, <coughs> I think I just did something crazy. The spider web delays it just enough that it explodes right on top of you for maximal impact. Guys, this is crazy. So the new and improved design doesn't even need something on top of it. You could probably just put these side by side. Oh, is that gonna one kill you? Is that... Let's just see. They don't stack, but like the range of damage off of this is insane. So now like it, it almost just looks like a staircase. Like you're going to run up it and there's a good chance you're going to fall in. And if you don't, you get blown up by fireworks. This is insane. The spider web was just a beautiful addition right there. All right, let's say you're afraid of mobs. Maybe you're a little bit of a Minecraft noob, or maybe people attack you at nighttime. Grant has created a way to make lava flow out when it turns to nighttime. So like whenever it's nighttime, when you're inside your base, boom, a lava waterfall. They got the Niagara, Niagara Falls of lava coming down outside your base. Honestly, Pretty nice. I like it. Dude, this dude put that much work into it. I feel like there's a simpler way to do it, and it involves using a daylight detector, and that's it. First off, let's just do like a basic test with like just the dispenser and lava and see like does this even does that even power it? Like I'm not 100 percent sure that'll work. Let's see. Dang, I really was kind of hoping this would just directly power it. Unless maybe it has to be right next to it. Oh, okay. What if we put it over here? All right. That comes out, should flow to the right. Boom, boom, boom. Then we set it back to nighttime, theoretically. Oh, this just doesn't turn it back off. How do these work? I gotta do some research. I don't even know how these things work. Daylight, detector, Minecraft. I mean, what if like... Let's see. Let's, that is all incorrect. Yeah, there we go. This. Oh! So the issue here, guys, is that there's still so much daylight in here. This thing's still spitting out some, some stuff here, all right? The redstone signal was there when I did time set night from the day. I should suck it back up now. Yes, I did it. This might be probably the worst way to use redstone ever, but I'm using a daylight and a nighttime sensor. So when it turns to nighttime now, it automatically turns the dispenser on. And then the other one will trigger once it turns to daytime. Again, I don't feel like this is the best way to do it. I feel like this is really bad, but that turns it back off. So now it automatically resets each time. 
ambulance. What the heck? There's so many cops outside. I didn't do it, guys. It wasn't me. All right, let's let's spend a little bit of a base here. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. The more I do this, the less I'm gonna recommend this one. At least at first, this is absolutely horrendous the way I did it. All right, so nighttime comes. You can see these things release the lava, and you, you might want to change it so it like releases it in like a better path than that. All right, let me try to clean it up real quick, guys. Let me show you what this could look like if you use my new and improved design. This is like iteration number four. All right, guys. So after like 30 minutes, this is what I came up with. It's gonna pulse twice. That's what you need to just use one of these. Basically, at the end of the day, I, I wasn't able to improve on Korean. All right, so this one on the surface does not seem good. It's a TNT landmine trap. Oh, all pressure plates. Oh, it's like a track full of pressure plates around the TNT. Again, I feel like we can take this to another level. This was made three or four years ago now. So like you put a little Loverfell spice on there, you know, the Zacklings come along, a little this, a little that, boom, we got ourselves probably like 50 times better. I love the idea that he came up with here, which was like surrounding it with just like a giant obsidian thing. So you don't like break your whole base. So just like make it solid obsidian. Solid obsidian, just like this. And as you can see has how well it broke the grass here. I'm about to sneeze, hold on. <laughs> Oh boy. Sometimes it hurts the stomach when you let those out. I guess you really do only want like one layer of TNT. So you can put some pressure plates around it, some carpet. I don't feel like that's hidden enough though. Oh boy, I'm definitely nervous about that. That is obvious. So we put the carpet on it. It's gonna hide it a little bit. You could go another layer and like try to create like a, almost a floor pattern design. Like this might actually like kind of trick people. Let me see how it looks. Okay, that's actually not bad. If you do something like this, it might actually just look like an entrance into like your base. Plus you're probably gonna step on it. I'm just gonna be honest because you're gonna forget about it. Hide it when we have, okay, well, there. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess the chicken's gonna test it for us there. Let's see, that definitely seems to work, yeah. Definitely seems to work. And the good news is it really didn't do any damage other than the side where it all exploded out of. What if we segmented it? Would it break up the neighbors? Like if we were to do this and I were to step on a pressure plate located here, do you think that would blow up the ones on the side? Oh, look at that. That's a nice little improvement. Honestly, I would have zero suspicion, especially with a design like that. I would think like there's no way. Those are just random pleasure plates that do nothing. All right, so this is called a magma fence. And I like this guy built an entire base for it and we just out here building it in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what we're defending. So let's see, you just put some magma on the ground. All right, what's more effective though? I mean, you could just jump over that, right? Like, like how are you gonna get people to get stuck in here? This seems like a weak trap to me. Let's see. I think it's a cool design using the end rock sideways. Like that is actually gonna look pretty sweet. But like in terms of actual defense, like I want something that actually works. Like I wanna protect my base from mobs. Can we make that a lot better? And I think the answer is yes, absolutely we can. So maybe something like this. I don't think the end rods are going to work right. Okay, I actually like this a little bit better than what he did. Because with too tall, you would think, oh, I can just walk underneath it. But when you go, you would crouch and you take damage and you actually can't fit through that. So this is basically what his design looks like. But like for aesthetic purposes, I think it looks pretty darn good. But if you're trying to kill players, trying to trick people and getting them to actually die, this is not going to do it. Now, the thought I have is, first off, you could just have a hole. Make them fall into the hole. You could also do this with carpet on top of it and you still take damage and you can't see it. That's also an option. Then you've got this where you'd have like magma, spider web, and then somehow get them to fall. Like if they fell in, they're stuck. They're going to take a lot of damage and die. So those are the three I think of right away. But like, what else can we do to make this better? Let's see if I could combine honey blocks with it. Oh, 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 guys. Okay. This is going to be the new version. I think this magma hurts you on the side. I'm curious why it should hurt you from the side. If it hurts you from the top, that doesn't even make sense. This just ruined my whole trap. Look what's this, this should be, I should be burning off little Johnny right here. This is just unacceptable. Okay. Well, that just ruined my idea or did it? So my idea was this, underneath there's random honey and random magma blocks. If you fall in, you're gonna take damage and you're gonna step on the honey and not be able to jump out. Oh, this is actually gonna kill me. So you're not gonna be able to jump out because if you're on a honey block, I'm sure you guys know, you can't jump out of a one block. So if you randomly place magma in there, players are gonna be jumping around trying to escape, taking damage, and they're gonna have to stand on the magma to take damage. Here is the uh, new design, I guess, for what I made. Make these ones honey, except like one of them. So boom, you make the jump, you get stuck down here in the ground, you can't get out, you're running around, you take some damage from the uh, the blocks. I don't think this would kill players. What do you guys think? Okay, so what basically we have here, my friends, is like a blaze shed. So we take some blazes from the nether, puts them in a little shed, and then launches them out. It's a one-time use trap. Might get a kill, might not get a kill, also might burn your base down. Overall, it's like, honestly, like not a great trap. I'm not using that. I don't think anyone's using that. We're gonna give ourselves a blaze spawner, and you're gonna make a trap out of it. I feel like the one that they had sucked. Number one, make sure it's not facing your base. Number two, design a turret system like so. The blaze is going to go in the center and what he's going to do is launch out of this on all four sides with the ability to attack. And if you design it correctly, I don't think he'll be able to leave. He might. He might be able to leave. I'm not sure. Okay, so there it is. Let's go in uh, survival here and see. Hey, Blazy. 
the little guy. Everybody. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, you just killed me. Okay, well, obviously that one works pretty well. Pretty good job already at that. How am I gonna get back? I'm gonna have to like go up for like an hour on these commands where I TP'd there. Oh my gosh. How many times did I set it tonight and noon? I understand that, that was a hard hack, but geez, I did it like 400 times. Carpal tunnel. Oh my gosh, I literally did it like 400 times. Look at it. Finally. Wow. So the cool thing about this design though is A, it looks cool. B, it's actually gonna protect your base. And C, if you don't want it to shoot a certain direction, it's literally as simple as just doing this. Like, let's say your base is back here. You know there's a blaze there. Literally just put a ball there and it can attack you. Like, that's your gate now. You put one of these towers on each side of your entrance. You literally have armed guards at the top. This is sick. Okay, first off, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is already too much redstone. Ain't nobody making a trap like this. What is this? Go mine an entire, you know, 60 hours worth of redstone to build a trap? No. Nah. Wow. I mean, it's an interesting idea. It's very interesting, and I'll give them that. But, like, in terms of functionality, you know, if this is for a player, just gonna dig right through it. Just gonna dig right through it. That ain't gonna work for nobody. Man, I'm giving that a thumbs down. Let's go ahead and make our own version. The gravel wall, I think all you would have to do, call me crazy, all right, is just do this on the outside and just literally put honey blocks in the ground. Okay, so this is my design right now. I'm literally getting rid of the gravel wall. I mean, it's just to stop mobs. So, but if they fall in here, they'd be stuck. We're gonna be using our body as live bait for mobs. We wanna be comfortable while we do it, you know? And then, a little slabby slab action. And since moms are so stupid, you don't even got to hide this stuff. But like, I would just put like one or two magma blocks down and just assume they'll probably walk into it. We're going to test and see if they do. But give ourselves like, uh, you know, a realistic situation where you're being attacked by 50,000 zombies, for example. Go into survival and see uh, see what happens. They can okay, here they go. Oh, the blaze is getting me. Okay, well, that's not, that's not, that's not what I expected to be happening here. Okay, so they're all getting into our zone, and Mike predicted they can't really escape because of the honey blocks, and they're literally just standing on the magma and dying. Now, the only issue is with the magma, that's kind of where they can't escape. So, like, magma's kind of a, eh, because they can kind of get out of that one, so maybe what you want to do is just dig some holes. Oh, they just triggered my firework trap, the sheep did. I feel like we, I feel like we need to adjust this, guys. Don't use the gravel wall. It's a lot of work. Don't do a lot of work. Do this, because it's easy. How'd this dude get purple light? Did you just see there was purple light in his base? Like, what's going on here? Oh, now this one's pretty smart. So what he's doing is putting the pressure plate inside, opens up the door, but it delays a circuit so long that like once you're inside, it's going to kill you. Now I can see this being very useful. The thing is you want to collect their items, right? You want to collect people's items when they die. Here's what we're going to do. Pressure plate's going to go down. Redstone is going to go underneath it. And the redstone's going to connect to that delayed circuit that delays it by a little bit of time. So it's going to connect to these. We'll put them all to four ticks. How long is that? little bit. Okay, so that's like a nice little delay there in the redstone signal. So that's going to actually cause it to blow up. Problem is, once it blows up, it's going to blow up your entire base. You know, you probably don't want that to happen. So... Maybe we'll make like a little tunnel. A little bit more TNT or something. It'll make it launch up. I'm not sure if that's true or not. So, fine. Once you step on this pressure plate, that'll delay it and it'll explode. The problem is, though, the base is still going to be blown up with it. I think chiseled sandstone is, like, more blast resistant. So, actually, I guess the most blast resistant is actually endstone. So, build yourself an endstone base, I guess. Now, if y'all see endstone, you're going to be real sus. But, okay, we got the endstone there, so it shouldn't damage all of the base, which is what we want. But, like, how do you collect the items? So, this is my thought. You're going to put water underneath the base. You're going to put ice right here. Gates in front of it. And then this is going to basically collect the items when they fall to the ground, right? Something like that. So, theoretically... The way we've designed this now, this TNT will all ignite below the crap out of the base, and then the water below should catch all the items and take it into the hoppers. This is the test on the brand new design. Watch through the door. Delayed explosion. Oh, oh, there it goes. You fall in. It's going to kill us. We've died. And now let's see if it actually sucked our items up like I thought it would. Oh, no, because there wasn't enough obsidian. So we're going to try it one more time and see what happens. We trigger it. That breaks. You fall in the hole or you don't. It really depends. And let's see what happens. So we died right there. We're going to go back and that should not have broken the obsidian, which means all of the items of the person you killed as expected flow right down into the hopper. You got to do a lot of tweaking and it means you're going to have to kill yourself a lot to test this one out. Uh, so for this one, you literally have to be online. All right. You have to be standing here, like literally just standing here and then pull a lever so that that thing falls. You literally can't leave. I think there's some better ways to make a pit of doom to allow things to fall into. I mean, do you really want to stand there for 30 hours waiting for someone to come by and maybe kill them? No, I don't think you do. So obviously you're going to need a giant hole. Okay. So on the bottom of the giant hole, I would put a bunch of hoppers, connect all those two chest that way when the unsuspecting person falls into your hole and they die you get their items guys you got to think smart i mean i think all you got to do is like this literally it could be the easiest thing ever just take scaffolding all the way up until it don't go up more and then they can go up more so now you can see when that bottom scaffolding breaks all of this will fall and everything on top of it will fall too so if you want to take a little bit of uh you know yellow concrete powder and do something like that, it's definitely suspicious. I'll tell you that right now. But you can put carpet on it, and I believe the carpet will also hide it. So you literally just have to break that one. You don't have to break them all the way down. So it's even easier than I thought. So take a piston, put it here, give it a redstone inverter real quick. So all we did was make a uh, redstone inverter here connected to a sticky piston. That's going to connect to this scaffolding, which will pull it back. And once that pulls it back, it'll break all the other scaffolding. So we covered all this redstone up, uh, except for that one. Oh! 
What the heck? I probably feel like that should have broken it, but it didn't. So let's try this. So I'm going to try to just push it. There it is. So it pushes it. Everything falls down, suffocates the creeper right there. But then it's literally like a five second reset. So in like a matter of like seconds, the entire thing is now rebuilt. And once we step on it again, boom, it all breaks. Everything falls down and gets sucked up. That is an improvement of the trap and you don't have to be there to do it. Now, this one's pretty cool because you can type whatever you want into books in Minecraft. I, I didn't know if you guys knew this and it just gives you what you want. If I sign this, it should just give me a, a diamond block. So test it here. And there it is, guys, a diamond block, just like that when we typed it in. If you want to see an entire episode where we use books to beat the game, magic books that give you whatever we type into it, click right here to watch that video. Peace.